tell me who you are, where you're from, and what your business is, because we're going to be talking about video, and I'm going to be talking a lot about specific types of video. And what that means, I would love to, as Nanette said, I would love to use your video, like your businesses themselves, like what you guys do, who you are. I want to use those as examples. And so if you can put that information in the chat, all that, who you are and all that stuff, that would make it so much easier for me. So without further ado, let us jump right on into the workshop. Today, we're going to be talking about using video on your website. Let me open up the chat panel so that I can see you. There you go. Thank you. Hey, Rosalind. Nice to see you again. I got to actually see Rosalind this weekend. It was very delightful in person even. Uh, and so, yeah, anyway, anyway, let me jump back in. You guys keep going. Keep telling me all about your businesses and all that good stuff. Um, we're going to talk about how to use video on your website. And um, I have, uh, well, let me tell you who I am. Hi, it is nice to see y'all. I'm Lindsay uh, and I am the Grow with Google digital coach for the state of Ohio. And for you, whoever you are and wherever you are at right now, I am your Grow with Google digital coach personally. And I am grateful to be spending time with you. You can see as I talk, the voice kind of clears up a little bit. So let's, let's keep this going, right? Uh, so yeah, keep them coming in the chat. I can see all of you uh, telling me who you are and where you're from. I do have a checklist that is downloadable. I'm going to drop it into the chat. And if Nanette, um, if you can grab that link, for some reason, I can't chat everybody. I can only chat you. So if you can grab that and pop it into the chat for everybody, that would be great. Uh, Y'all, I am very excited because this workshop is different. If you've done the YouTube workshop with me before, there may be a little bit of overlap, but there's a lot of stuff that we're going to talk about that's actually different. So very excited for this workshop so that I can jump into some different stuff. So first of all, let's tell you a few stats that you maybe, maybe didn't know. Video on your website is very, very powerful. People who put video on their website are reported to get 41% more website traffic from search than non-users. Meaning if you have video on your website, the website, the um, search engines are more likely to serve you up as an answer to people's questions if you have video. Wow, isn't that amazing? 73% of people would rather use video to learn about a product or a service than to read. As we all know, people don't read. And so if you are wondering like what people want it, yes, they want to use a video. They want to watch a video in order to learn about your products or your services. And then you are 53% more likely to be ranked on the first page of Google if you're using video on your website. Now, these are all statistics that are done from surveys and things like that, just to get you guys an idea of what it means to have video on your website. Because I think a lot of us are thinking that, you know, video isn't that important for your website. Maybe you're thinking it's only important for social media because all the social medias are asking you right now to use video. They're all prioritizing video, but that's not just it. That's not the only thing. There's the utility of video on your website itself. So for this workshop, we're going to talk about three things. We're going to talk about adding video to your YouTube channel, getting that video onto your website, and then the types of videos that you can use on your website. So I said, I'm going to talk about all the different types of videos that are out there. So thank you for telling me who you are and what kind of video, what kind of businesses you have so that I can actually use those as examples in this conversation. So let's go through the basics of creating and adding uh, channels, adding videos to your channel. If you have a YouTube channel that you are adding content to, there are some basic concepts with your videos that you might want to hit. First things first is that you want to be thinking about what kind of story you're telling, what the purpose of the video is, and who is the star. Now, if we're talking about video for our website, that is going to be different than video that you would necessarily put on your social media. Now, when I say it's going to be different, I don't mean that it's 100% all the way completely going to be different. It could be some, some of the same videos. And matter of fact, you might shoot video on your, like for your website that you share on your social media, but you might not shoot video for your social media that you would share on your website, if that makes sense. So you can use your website video on your social media, but you might not necessarily want to use your um, social media videos on your website. It just depends on what the purpose of them is. So when you're thinking about the kind of content we're creating, remember these three things. What's the story? What's the purpose? And who is the star? 
Now I'm going to go through a bunch of different video types at the end. And when we're looking at those video types, these three things need to be top of mind when you're creating each of those video types at the end. So first of all, again, there's three main types of stories. And these three main types of stories can be used in a variety of ways. You have your business story, which is who you are, what you do. That's the about you thing. The product or service story, which is about the product or service that you have. So if you were, um, oh, I love this example. So if you were creating the Irish uh, news magazine like John O'Brien, then that would be a story about the magazine itself. And so there's, you know, the magazine, what the magazine has to offer, what kind of stories you feature in the magazine. It wouldn't be stories from the magazine. It would be stories about the magazine. There we go. And then the business story is going to be stories about maybe even John. So like how he got started, what are the inner workings, the behind the scenes at the magazine, that's your business story. And then promotional stories are going to be the stories that are timely, um, detailed stories that are about basically trying to get people to buy things. So again, going back to that Irish Magazine example, if there are specific seasons around which the magazine is revolving, like quarterly, or if there are holidays where there are special editions, then the promotional stories would be about those things. So it would be promotional stories about the times of year that you would want to have this magazine in your household for yourself and your community, right? So these are the different types of stories that you can have. Now, from there, I want to make sure that we have a few good best practices. I'm going over some basics from video for you real quick, because we're going to dive into actually how to do a bunch of this stuff. And I want to make sure you guys understand what we're going to be doing first. First things first, whatever video you have, before you start recording, you should have a clear and concise message. What is it exactly do you want this video to do? And in the first five seconds of that video, you need to capture everyone's attention by telling them exactly what is in the video and what you want that video to do, right? So a lot of times you'll hear people in the first five seconds of a video on YouTube or on their website say, just jump right in whatever the topic is. Because when you do that, it really helps people to learn and understand, oh, okay, I know exactly what it is that this video is trying to accomplish. And then you want to deliver a timely call to action. Now, when you're putting video on your website, this is even more important than you would have for video on your social media or video on a regular YouTube channel that you might have. Your call to action for your website content is usually going to be related to the type of video it is and where on your website it lives. So essentially on your website, every video on your website needs to have a job that it is doing. And you need to be thinking through what is the job that this video is doing and how can I get this video to accomplish that job and what's the call to action that I want to put in this video to get it to accomplish that job. When you are shooting your video, there are three things, very, very three very specific things that you want to make sure that you're doing. Your space needs to be good. Your lighting needs to be good. And your sound needs to be good. Now, when I say sound, I don't mean like your voice because clearly my voice is not hopping right now. But I can tell you this. I will shoot a video sounding like this. As long as I can be heard and it is clear, it doesn't quite matter. Uh, and then the same thing with the space. If your space isn't like, you know, the best looking space possible, not really that much of an issue. What's more important is that your space isn't distracting. And then the lighting, your lighting and your sound are quite possibly the two most important things because if people can't hear you or they can't see you, if the you is the thing that they need to see or whatever it is actually that needs to be seen, if they can't hear or see it, then they're not going to participate. And that's just unfortunately the truth. If they can't hear or they can't see it, then they're not going to participate. Um, Christine, if you were trying to click the link that I gave you and that's not working for you, uh, confirm that for me, and then I'll make sure that we get you a, a proper link that works, okay? Now, we talked about sound because sound is very, very important, um, but if for some reason you're like really interested in putting music in or sound effects and things like that into your video, but you don't have access to music that you feel like is good music to use in your, you know, your business or for your business, 
very fortunately for all of us, YouTube actually has an entire sound effects and music library that is completely free. I will show it to you in just a minute when we actually hop into YouTube. I am a very, uh, I'm, I'm very, um, I'm very big on show and tell, okay? So I'm gonna be showing you and telling you and not just showing you. I just wanna get through a few little bits of information before we jump into the show part of the show and tell. Okay, so let's talk about creating your channel. One of the things that I always let everybody know is that once you're getting started with YouTube, YouTube is the place where you would host your video. So we're, we're talking about putting your video on your website, but if you're going to put video on your website, you need to have that video living somewhere first. Because if you go to put video on your website and your video doesn't live somewhere first, it's gonna make your website really, let's call it heavy. Uh, and that means your website is gonna be slow. And so instead of having your website have your videos hosted on your, web, on your website, you wanna host your video on YouTube. Now, this is something that is extremely common. And just because it is on YouTube, it doesn't mean that it needs to be available for everybody to see. You can actually have a video on YouTube that you're hosting on YouTube, but that's not public for everyone to see. And you can still use that video on your website. So let me show you what that means. Let's go over to YouTube real quick. And I'm going to see, I have 17 different YouTube channels that I work with and manage. Uh, okay, good. This one is a YouTube account that does not have any videos associated with it. Let me go to one that does. So let me go to my YouTube channel for my business. Okay, so on this YouTube channel, this is just the main YouTube login. You're going to want to go to the YouTube studio, not your channel. So if you can see that, I'm going to YouTube studio. And when I go to the studio itself, it's where you can actually see live streams and things like that that I have put out on my website. Now, when I was talking earlier about the audio library, let me go to that first. The audio library is right here on the left side of your screen, on the left sidebar there at the very, very bottom, it says audio library. This audio library is completely free completely and utterly free. And the only thing you have to do when you hover over something and you like it is download it. Once you download it, you can use it if you're creating a video in Canva or if you're creating a video in Premiere Pro or whatever people on a Mac use. <laughs> I don't know because I don't own a Mac, but whatever software you're using to actually create your video, you can upload any of these sounds, any of these sound effects. So trucks, squeaky, uh, squeaky straws, bonfires, cars driving by, whatever sound it is you want, you can actually download that sound effect. It has times on here. So if you want to have something that sounds like a bonfire running for three minutes, you have a three minute long segment. It's very, very nice, uh, very useful for you so that you can actually uh, get whatever it is you're trying to accomplish done via sound right here inside of your sound effects library, inside of YouTube. Everyone has access to this. As long as you actually have a YouTube channel that you're running, you have access to the sound library completely for free. So let's go back to the dashboard so that I can actually show you how uploading a video works. So you would hit the create button or you could hit one of these two buttons here, the upload or the go live. Both of these two buttons do the get you a video up on YouTube. When you hit the upload button, it is gonna ask you for a video file for you to select. And once you select that video file, it is going to start uploading that content. Once that content is uploaded, it will give you the option to fill in all of the information that you need to fill in. So the details that you're gonna fill in are going to be the title of the, the video, a description, and then the ability for you to create either a thumbnail or use one of the thumbnails that is now available to you because YouTube actually selects thumbnails from your video. So whether you have a thumbnail pr prepared, which you can do, nowadays you can actually create one in advance. So if you wanna create one of those thumbnails that has text on it and all that fun stuff, you can do that in Canva, it is completely free. And then you can upload that thumbnail directly to YouTube once you are uploading your video. You can then add in subtitles, end cards, cards, you can add in all sorts of information. You can do a 
copyright check on your video before you release it to make sure that it is not a video that has copywritten material. So if you ever watch a YouTube video of something like a wedding or a party that someone's at and you see them dancing to music that doesn't look like the music that's playing, it is likely because the music that's playing is copywritten music and you can't have copywritten music in a video that is monetized. So let me tell you what monetized means because a lot of you are wondering. Let's go back over to YouTube real quick so that I can show you what monetization is. When you are monetized on YouTube, it means that you have reached 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. That's a combined. You can't do one without the other. Once you have hit both of those things, then you will be eligible for your YouTube channel to earn you ad revenue. Now, YouTube is already playing ads during your video. That's a, that doesn't that happens no matter what. But if your videos do not have a total of 1,000 subscribers on your channel and 4,000 watch hours between all of your videos, then you will not be monetized, just how it works. I will give you my big secret. Are your ears open? You guys ready for it? Big secret. If you want to get monetized quickly on YouTube, the absolute best thing you can do is post daily for a year. It's hard. It's very hard to do. But if you post daily for about a year, you will have all of those videos, 365 videos that are live on YouTube. And if you do that, and potentially, I would say every video you have to ask people, subscribe if you love this content. That's one thing you can do. Very, very, very useful. Or you could also run a subscriber contest. So you can say, I am going to give away a $100 Amazon gift card to the, you know, to two people, but in order to win, you have to be subscribed to my channel and like me on Facebook or whatever the other platform is you love. And when you do that sort of thing, it actually increases the likelihood that people will subscribe and then you can increase your subscriber count pretty significantly very quickly. So that sort of thing is how you would get to that subscriber and video watch hours quickly because the 4,000 hours is probably the bigger obstacle of the two. It's very very hard to get 4,000 watch hours with videos. It's easier to do it if you have a lot of videos, which is the reason why the 365 actually makes a huge difference. So get a lot of videos on your channel as quickly as you can. Don't upload more than one a day, though that doesn't work. So one a day for, you know, over the course of a year and you will be golden. You will be pretty much on track to get yourself monetized quickly. So back to the copyright. Why was I telling you about monetization? Because if you have copywritten um, audio, video, I mean, there's, there is a such thing as copywritten video, but people cheat on that one all the time. Uh, so I'm not even going to tell you how to cheat because it's not because I don't want you out there doing it. But copywritten audio is the biggest issue because all of the um, the audio checkers on YouTube are very, very, very good. And then a lot of um, Recording studios actually have their own audio checkers on YouTube to make sure that people aren't using their content. So if you upload a, a video with a Disney track or something owned by the Beatles or the Rolling Stone or some other very large band, it is extremely likely that that content will get demonetized very quickly or that more than likely it won't get demonetized. Demonetized means that you won't be eligible for ad revenue. It'll stay monetized, but then they'll take all of the ad revenue that you're getting and give it to that like copywritten music producer, right? So now your video is earning whichever of the Beatles is still alive. It is earning them money. Okay, so that's why you don't use copywritten music in your video. So instead, you would use that audio library that I showed you earlier just to make sure that you're not adding in any content that is copywritten because it will just mess you up if you are. When you do that little check, it'll actually tell you if the music is copywritten. And if you have something that sounds too similar to something that's copywritten, it'll also let you know. Um, this one you can dispute. So if you know it's not copywritten, you can dispute it. And then a lot of times they'll do a manual check and make sure that it's not. And once it isn't, then you can get your, um, your, your video will run without any issues. If you do not care about monetization, none of this matters, but I would still not put copywritten music in my videos, even if I don't care about monetization, mostly because certain copywriters 
are banning content, meaning if you put the video up there and it's like an about video for your, your business and you use some very widely known copywritten music, they might actually just remove the video from YouTube. And then that then your video wouldn't be available for anybody to watch. So it's not really worth it. You might want to just use the copywritten, the stuff that's available inside of YouTube or um, any of the other audio providers like Epidemic Sounds or um, Audio Jungle. There's a lot of great producers out there who are producing music available for you to either buy or use for free um, in your YouTube videos. Now, remember earlier when I said you can have a video hosted on YouTube, hosted, but you might not have that video available for everybody to watch. Well, visibility is how you make that difference. So you can change a video and have it be private, unlisted, public, and you can actually schedule it. So I would say for the purposes of our conversation, the two things that you would want to do is either make your video unlisted or public. If you make it private, nobody can watch it. So you would want to make it unlisted or public. And then if you want it to be public, that means anyone on YouTube can watch it and on your website. If you make it unlisted, only on your website is the place that's going to be visible or anyone you send that link directly to that video. Those are the only people who will be able to see it. So if you have, y'all, if you have any questions during this whole thing, please let me know. I'm moving fast because we've got a lot of content to cover and I want to make sure I get it all in there. Now, once you have published your video, you're going to get a link. See that little thing there that says video link and it actually has a little copy button right next to it. This is where the gold is for this workshop. Once you get that link is when you can do all the fun embedding and all that stuff with everything that we're talking about. Now, in addition to your regular videos that you can put on YouTube, you can also use your handy dandy phone to upload video shorts. Video shorts are YouTube's answer to Reels or to TikTok, whichever one you think they're actually competing with. So Reels or TikToks, they're short videos, 60 seconds or less, and they're usually hyper visual, uh, meaning that people are actually watching them with audio. Uh, and they're watching them like on purpose and intentional. So you would want to make sure that you have all the elements there for your short video. And then you can take your short and embed it onto your website. So any video, any content that you've created, you can embed anywhere. So just wanted to make sure I included shorts in there in case you are a very heavy shorts user. Okay. Now, how do you actually add video to your website? I'm going to show you using my handy dandy website provider, Wix. Now, the very first thing you need to think about is that for best practices, you want to make sure that the video that you're adding is the focal point, meaning that if you have a video that it's not hiding, and I'm going to show you an example of what that means in a second. Mostly you want people to know it's a video and what you want it to have a play button. You want it to be a video that is clearly a video. Otherwise it's confusing and you don't want people to be confused. You also want to make sure that you're not auto playing a video with sound. So if you do have a video on your website that that video is not automatically playing in the background with sound, because if you're automatically playing it with sound, then that is going to make it so that it's basically impossible for anybody to watch it because they are going to, you know, immediately it starts playing and they're going to go try to mute it. They're going to stop, pause it. They're going to walk away. Like everybody runs when they're at their computer or at their job. Worse, worse. They're, they're surfing the web and they go to your website and the video is auto playing with sound it's the worst experience ever so don't auto play with sound you can auto play a video there's something wrong with that and then if you auto play with subtitles there you go that's golden but auto playing with sound very bad idea and then allow the users to have control there are a lot of video players out there that allow you to remove control from the video don't do that why would you do that so when you remove control, essentially you're saying you have to play this video all the way through straight. No, I don't, I don't care whether they play the video all the way through straight. That's beside the point. What I do want them to be able to do is pause it. Let's say, for instance, they got started and they're, you know, in the middle of it and they're learning all about me and now they want to know more. Well, pause because you got to go potty or because your dog started barking or whatever the thing is. I want people to be able to control the video. It just makes them have a better experience with the content. And I know some of you have experienced the things that I'm talking about here. And so, you know, and you know, so 
Yep, you know. So make sure that you are doing the things that we're talking about here because it does make for a good experience. Now let's head over to Wix because I said I was going to make sure I showed you how to do some of these things. Oh, good. I am logged in. I was like, oh, goodness gracious. I hope I'm actually logged in so that I can show you all all this good stuff. Now, Wix is uh, my website provider of choice. I actually like using Wix for the same reasons that I like using, um, I don't know, just about any other software. I actually have a subscription to Wix. I don't know why it's giving me a sale, um, but I like it because it's easy. It's very, very easy. It's easy for everyday people to use, meaning you and me. You do not have to be some sort of certified expert in Wix in order to use Wix. It's very simple. Now, I'm going to show you two different places in a, a website that you can put video and how easy it is to put it in that place. So first things first, I'm going to look at a blog post. Now, I clicked on the blog post from the blog post little area there. And this web, this article right here actually comes directly from a video that I did. Yep, good. A video that I did regarding my best, best advice about marketing funnels. Now, if I come over here to my content, I'm actually going to search uh, marketing funnels. I wanted to show you, oh, of course. Hey, I got, I have a thing called marketing Monday. Let me put in funnels. I never use the word funnel. So it probably is not going to have, it's not going to be up on there because I hate the word funnel. So let's, I'm just going to use one of the more recent videos. Um, batch creation, just to show you what I mean. So with this video, I am going to click on the little details option so that we get all of the information. So here I can change, I can see what the title is. I can change the title. I can see what the thumbnail is. But what I want here is this little link right there. So I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to head back over to Wix. And then I'm going to come down here somewhere in the middle of my blog post before I get too far in. And I'm going to hit that plus button. When I hit the plus button, I'm going to go over to video. And this is where legitimately the magic happens. You saw all I did was grab the link. Now, all I have to do is paste the link in here and hit add. Now, this YouTube video is put right in the middle of my content. I have the ability here. It has the title. It has my channel watch later, share, and then if someone clicks a little YouTube button, it'll take them over to YouTube to play the video. Now, why do I have it up at the top? Well, you want to have your video near the top because I want it to play near the beginning of the person's time on the website. Now, if you've been in any of my other workshops, if you specifically have been in my analytics workshop, you've heard me talk about time on your website. Google Analytics and SEO, two things. Google absolutely loves it when people spend time on your website. Reason why all of those detailed statistics that I told you about work is because if you have a video on your website, it increases the likelihood that someone's going to stay on the website because they're going to watch the video. Now, if you have a website video, a video on your website that is pertinent information to whatever the topic is. So of course, this would be better if it was a video about marketing funnels, but if it doesn't really matter, as long as the content is related to the whatever the topic is, the closer related, the better, so that people are actually watching information that is useful to them. Someone who does this really well is a woman named Tanya Eliza. I hope I'm doing it right, Tanya Eliza. And Tanya Eliza has a YouTube channel and a blog. And now I'm going to see if I can get to her blog because, of course, it's not the first thing. Oh, there it is. Training. She calls them training videos. And it is her blog. Now, when you go to her blog, let's hope I don't click on the one time she doesn't have it. I am going to. Oh, no, this is, of course, a podcast. I did click on the one time she doesn't have it. <laughs> So instead on this blog post, instead of putting in a video, she actually put in a blog post episode. That genius. She's really good at doing this either way. Let me see if it has, if there's a video about Instagram. But she has on her, her um, website, no matter what, there we go. 
what she does that is genius is in her blog post, she actually basically transcribes the video. So she does her video on the topic. Are you looking good on Instagram? My secret to Instagram growth. She calls it the same thing in her, um, her blog post. She actually uses her thumbnail as the image on her blog post. And then she embeds the video right there in the blog post. So she is using all of the assets exactly the right way. She created one image. So now that one image is her thumbnail and her blog post thumbnail. She is putting that video content on her website, but also basically using the words from that video content as her blog post. So for everyone in here who says, I hate writing, I don't know how to write. I'm a bad writer. Whatever you're saying about yourself about writing, first of all, it is very unlikely that it's true. But second of all, if you feel like that, maybe you can take your videos and transcribe them and turn them into blog posts. So now you have video content and blog posts and they're doing the exact same thing, but for the two different types of people out there. There are people who don't wanna read all this stuff. There's hundreds of words here. Lots, maybe thousand. There's a lot. Who, what, how, and closing. All those things. There's more. It keeps going. This is crazy. There are so many people who won't read that. They're not going to scroll all the way down. They're not going to finish it, but they will watch this video, especially because our videos are not that long. They're pretty, pretty quick and to the point. And why do I even know that this exists? Why do I even know Tanya Eliza is a person? I know about her because I was served up a video by her on YouTube. Amazing. So I've been talking about YouTube, but I don't want you Facebook people to feel left out. So if you're thinking, but Lindsay, what if I don't have YouTube videos? What if I only have Facebook videos? So let's go back to that little plus button again on Wix and on a lot of other websites. So Wix is an example because it's so easy. It's so easy. It's crazy. But when you click on the video with Wix, it says paste a URL from YouTube, Vimeo, or Facebook. So if you are me and the majority of your video content actually lives on Facebook, because that's where I've done, on Facebook, I've done hundreds of videos over the past five, six, seven years, then I can actually take the link from the Facebook video and embed it into my Wix blog. It works exactly the same way. It's exactly the same way. And so the point is to keep people on the website. The point is to get people to watch your content and to get your message. That's the point, right? So it doesn't matter whether the video is living on YouTube or Vimeo or Facebook. Now, Vimeo, yes, I said the word Vimeo. Vimeo is only bad because your Vimeo videos don't get shown to anybody. At least with Facebook and YouTube, both of those platforms are actually going to voluntarily show your, your video to other people. When you put it on Vimeo, no one's going to see it except for the people you show it to. And Vimeo is not free. So if you're going to use Vimeo, you're going to have to pay and you're going to have to pay essentially by minute for however long your videos are. And it's very expensive. It's not by minute, it's by like megabyte or whatever, but it's still very gigabyte. It's very expensive. And so I would rather use one of the free platforms like Facebook and YouTube. And if you don't want your videos shown to a bunch of people, just put it up on YouTube as an unlisted video. And there you go. That solves your problem. People will still be able to see it. So you can add your videos to a blog post. Well, we just talked about that. The other thing you can do, I am going to leave without saving that. The other thing you can do is actually put your video on any page of your website. So I'm actually going to go to my website and I'm going to go to the about page on my website. Now, I did an entire series of videos on Facebook introducing myself to my audience. Of course, this is going to take 900 years just because I clicked over here. I did an entire series of videos on um, Facebook. And if I wanted to, I could go and grab any of those videos and pop them into my about page. About pages are a great place to actually tell people about yourself. And if there is a product that you want to offer to tell people about that product. Now, what I could do here, if I wanted to add in video is to add a strip it's one of the easiest things to do. It's like, it's super easy. So I can add a standard strip. If I add a strip, the reason why I like adding a strip is because then that's like a container. So now that I have a container, I'm going to click the add button again. And then I'm just going to go down to 
embed, or it actually has on here images. And when you go to the image area, if you scroll down, oh, no, of course it's not there. Does it have it? Oh, video. So it's in the video section. If you go to the video section, it has right on here, YouTube, Facebook, whichever one you want. Now I'm going to give you a couple of little cheats. If you have multiple videos, so let's say you are Kathy and you have a wine glass decanting business where you have wine, wine glass decanters and all that, and you maybe have a series of videos where you show people how to decant into different types of bottles, you could have a little playlist that you've either created on Facebook or YouTube. And then here, when I pop this into my website, of course, the spacing is bad. Forgive me. This is on top right now. I would actually make this, let me make it a little bit bigger so that it would capture this whole space. See, there we go. Wix is so easy, y'all. I'm making this modification on the fly. It's just such an easy website uh, creator. And then it attaches it to the strip and we're good. So now once I create this, all I have to do is go to manage video. And when you click on manage video, it's going to ask you which playlist which video library would you like to add? Now, I already have a bunch of videos on my website, but I can add video from YouTube. And when you paste a URL here, it could be a single URL or it could be a URL to a playlist. Again, I don't wanna be talking past you, so let me go show you what that means. If you have a playlist on YouTube, anytime you have a playlist, that playlist actually has its own URL. Now, if you can see the bottom of my screen there, it's showing up, watch, question mark, V equals BBO, blah, blah, blah. Now, if I go into edit, let me see if I can click in edit and get the link. That play all right there is where the link is. Let's see if it's gonna add, no, it's gonna only give me the option to, I would have to click play all. When you play all, the link is right here at the top. So I'm going to copy it. And the reason why I'm doing this is just to, to give you, show you the point. Once I put it in there, it actually gives me the playlist right here. If I hit add to library, it's going to add the entire stream of playlist videos to my website. It's that easy. Uh, very, very easy stuff. So <laughs> I didn't even finish adding. I just clicked on the one that I wanted and it kind of created it for me there. It just it is so easy. And then you can change how you want the layout to look, whether you want the comments to be in there, what kind of design you want, what colors you want, all of those types of things right there inside of your website. Very, very easy to do inside of Wix. So just wanted to give you some examples of where you can do this in your website. Now let's talk about what you can do like this, how to embed it. The idea is simple with either Facebook or YouTube, you can embed both of them mostly just using a link. No more coding, none of that anymore. It's so easy. They're just making it so easy for you. So what are the types of videos that you can put on your website? Now I had y'all put all this information in here and I wanna talk about the different types of videos you can use. So first of all, you want to keep the videos very specific. So either keep them very short or make them nice and long. But the whether which of those two you do is going to be based on the utility of the video itself, right? So if you have a video on your homepage that is explaining something explicit about your business, that video needs to be as long as it can be, as long as it needs to be in order to get someone to understand exactly how that process works. A company that does that really, really well is Sticker Mule. They actually have on their website a button that, sh that shows you exactly how to place an order with Sticker Mule. It's very quick, gets you all the information you need to know about how to actually put an order in on their website. Now, you might be thinking, why? Well, the reason why is because the name of their company is Sticker Mule, and I would bet you that they get a lot of traffic from people who want to just buy pre-made stickers, meaning a design that already is created and they're just buying it like because they like unicorns and they want to buy unicorn stickers. Well, that's not what Sticker Mule does, or like people think they're buying stickers 
that look like mules. One of the two. Anyway, that's not what they do. They actually make custom stickers for people like you and I. So if you have a business, that candle making business where you wanted a candle that is, or if you were, what is it, Mel? If you wanted to have a candle that was exactly in the shape of your logo, you could actually get them to make you a custom sticker in exactly the shape of your logo that you could put on your boxes. Well, they need to explain that to people because a lot of people don't understand it and they don't understand how it works. So an explainer video is basically if you sell or do something that people don't understand. So I'm like looking at through what you guys have here. And I think I already know what Jolene does, but I'm going to pretend like I don't. Oh, no, I can do it with Lisa. It's even easier. So with Lisa, I don't know what Wagon, wagon Trails is, right? I have an idea. I, I get not, I got, I got an idea that it's about an animal that wags a tail, but wags in trails. I don't know. But what she could do is on the homepage of her website, she could have a video, not just explaining what wagon tails is the business, but she could explain why wagon tails the name in that same video. And that would be so much fun. So like in that video, Lisa is explaining both what about the business and why about the business? Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. So, oh, it's a dog walking accessory. Okay. So what about the business and why? Like it could be both of those things on the same video. The idea is very simple though, getting to explain something and it's usually going to happen on your homepage. Now, the second type of video that you can have is a demo video. And goodness gracious, Lisa, if yours isn't another really, really great example. So a demo video is showing someone how to use your product or service. Now, we might think that demo videos are only useful for products, like a physical product, like they're going to have to put on someone. Now, I was just at my sister's house a few weeks ago, and at, she has a lovely dog of various heritage, otherwise known as a mutt. And this mutt has a has a soon to be um SWAT team member as her, her let's just say he's not a soon to be SWAT team member he's a soon to be pup dad my my sister's boyfriend is a SWAT member on the police force and and so he bought this dog this like military style harness it is hilarious and so I go to harness the dog so that I can take him out take her outside to potty and I'm like how do you even use this thing like I needed a tutorial video on how to put this thing on the dog <laughs> and so that's what a demo video can be used for it's not just for like a, explaining how a software works or something like that but then for some of us here there I'm sure there's a few people who have there we go, physical therapy or chiropractic. You might think that everyone knows what that is. They don't. Oh my goodness, for Christine, you have a CDC or an economic development corporation that you work with. People have no idea what you do, none whatsoever. And so what you could do is not just an explainer video, but for each of the different product and service areas that you have, you could write a demo video. So you would be demonstrating a specific aspect of what the development center does, right? So it's a how to engage with us. And I always like to say, the more information you give people before they become your customers, A, the more easily it is that they will become one, and the easier it will be for them to give you their money for you as a nonprofit. You want a totally different thing, but give you their time, their patronage, whatever it is, if you have something that lowers the barrier to entry, right? Lowering the barrier to entry. Judy. So we want to make sure that we're doing that with a demo video, demonstration. Now, since Judy just hopped into the chat, I'm going to use an example of when a demo video maybe doesn't work. Oh, Alsace, I'm gonna, I am gonna—I got an example for you. So Alsace and Judy are both artists. When you're an artist, it seems like maybe you don't want to show someone exactly how to do the thing that you're doing. Well, first things first, People are lazy and untalented. And so you definitely can show them exactly how you do what you do because there is no way they can replicate it. But that isn't necessarily a demo video. So for Judy, Judy holds classes. And so maybe Judy would do a demo video that was actually demonstrating what a class setup looks like. So for someone who might be coming in to do a um, uh, glass 
uh, she does a stained glass classes. So someone who might be coming in to do a stained glass class might be a little intimidated by the idea that they're going to be melting metal into glass. Like, I don't know what that means. And so she could do a demo video just showing how easy it is and what kind of protective equipment they use so that you don't have to worry about burning yourself or so that you would know that when you do, it won't hurt that much, whatever. Uh, so like you would have a demo video for that. Now, an about us or an about you video is another really, really great video to put on your website. Now, I use this example on purpose. I've already shown you what it looks like to put a good about video on your website, where you put it on your about us. It's centered in the middle of the page. It shows you exactly what the person is all about. But in this one, this image over here in the corner where it says family owned since 1957, that's the video. You see how it's like off in the corner, hiding. It's hiding away. No one can see it. There's no play button on it to let you know it's a video. Now, when you click on the image, it opens up a light box, which is nice. Takes up a lot of the screen, except for I wouldn't know that unless someone told me that was a video. And so, no, you don't want to do that on your website. If you're going to have a video, make it obvious so that everyone can see it. And if you and if you use one of these things, these like embeddable things that I was just talking about, then that play button will just be sitting right there. So here, there's a play video button right there. It makes it super easy for people to understand that this is a video. You want to be doing that with your video content as well. Now, a customer story video. This is where the artists get to shine because a lot of people think I can't do a customer story video or they think the only people who can do really good customer story videos are people like Christine who has maybe success stories from what her community development corporation has done where she can show different projects that they've worked through, which is a customer for them. It's a completed project or an outcome for an actual client who had some sort of housing situation that was remedied by them. That's a great customer story. And you might be thinking, I don't have customer stories. I'm not a chiropractor. Like, I don't sell things like that. But a customer story for you could be a commission. Now, for the artists in the room, they know exactly what I mean by a commission. A commission is when someone pays you money to produce artwork for them. For you, you don't need the customer on the other side telling their story for you to do a customer story if you have commissions. If you are a boutique or an artist, something like that, where people routinely come into you and say, hey, I would love, and then describes something to you, your customer story video could be a video of you creating that thing with a voiceover telling what the customer wanted. Oh my goodness. That's a good customer story. So now it is a story about this commissioned piece of art. And on top of that, what is it doing? It is selling the art because now everyone is like, oh, I totally want that thing that that person commissioned. They may not want that exact thing, but they can now imagine based on your description of what it was that that person wanted and the execution of that desire, then you could then be selling to people in the future who have an idea for a piece of art in their mind, but they themselves are not artists and know they can't do it. So, you know, now you have this great combination of things that is producing for you a customer story where you don't have to interview a customer in order to make it happen. Okay. So that is the way to show your art in progress. It's an art in progress with a purpose. Remember, I talked about the things you need when you're doing a video and the purpose is one of them. And for a customer story, the story, the, the, uh, the, the, the star is the art. It is the client's art. That is the star. It's not you. You are the muse. You're the artist in the background, but the star is actually the customer. Okay. And the artwork. It's great. It is amazing what you can do with a customer story. So I hope you guys totally understood what I meant by all of those, okay? Like those are the big, like hairy details. The ones that everyone can do, literally everyone. So if you have, uh, you know, a homepage where maybe a video doesn't work or you're not sure about whether or not you want to tell an about us story because maybe you're a very large organization that's been around for a while and you're like, which part, which part of my story do you want me to tell? Or maybe you're a brand new video, uh, um, video, a brand new business and you don't know how to tell your story yet. Everyone can do how-to videos. Now, how-to videos are great because I think everyone doesn't think they can do how-to videos, but how-to videos are stupid easy for everyone. 
all you have to do is ask yourself, what are the frequently asked questions around my topic? So for some of you, it might be uh, for print on demand, it might be what uh, what does the process look like for me to order a ebook on demand that someone's going to have printed as a book? What does that look like? Well, then the how to video would be showing that person how to maybe go from concept to design to upload to finished book. So how to go through that process. So it is not just a demo because for you, a demo might not make sense. Like, are you gonna demo the printing process inside of your shop? Maybe, maybe not. But actually showing someone, okay, if you have a concept, you've already written your book, this is how you lay it out. This is how you do this. This is how you do that. This is how you upload it. And then this is where the book is gonna be sent to your house in a box that you open. There you go. Like it is that kind of how to, but then you can do that for everything that you print right? But that is just one example. You can do how-tos of just about everything. Everyone in here has some sort of customer frequently asked question, something that people are asking you constantly, even if it's as simple as, how do I actually book a class? Well, then maybe the how-to is actually a how-to video on going to the SCORE website and looking at the different offerings for workshops and then figuring out, showing them exactly how to sign up. If that's the how-to you got to create, that's the how-to you got to create. My job is to tell you, don't judge your audience for what they don't know, okay? Don't judge people because they're stupid. They just are. There's not, I don't know nothing about making glass art, not one darn thing. And so everything about it makes me sound like an idiot. I'm stupid. But that doesn't mean that you can't tell me what I need to know, right? So we just need to remember that and tell people what they need to know and how-to videos are the best way to accomplish that. Okay, so that was a lot of information, y'all, a whole lot of information. Um, I want to know from everyone in here, what did you learn today? That's your price of admission. You're here and you learned something. I want to know, what did you learn today? What did you get? What do you now know that you didn't know before we got started? Okay, so in the chat, Tell me what you know, what you know now that you didn't know before. I'm going to be looking for it while I give you my quick wrap up. So I want you to get started first. If you haven't yet created some sort of YouTube channel, create your channel. It's not very hard. That little um, uh, worksheet that I gave you earlier that has an actual little description of exactly how to create a channel if you haven't yet. Once you get that done, upload your video. Even if you're shy and you don't want anyone to see it just now, upload it, leave it as unlisted, but get it up there, okay? And then after that, there are a ton of resources available. You're gonna get a copy of this video. So after you start creating, go back and watch this video. This is available to you as a resource that is completely free. And so go ahead, rewatch this video, search out other videos on YouTube. There are other people who are explaining this process as well. Search out those videos and, and, and increase your knowledge. And if you are really interested in taking things to the next level, then you can always go and get a trusted expert to help you with the process. You guys are learning all sorts of stuff. I love it. Okay, okay, in bed. It's easier than you realize, okay? Uh, okay, so trusted partners. And then of course, on YouTube, there is a Grow With Google YouTube channel that I am actually on. I'm on there talking about YouTube ads, not YouTube ads, Google ads. Um, it's one of my favorite things that I've ever done is an actual video for the Grow With Google channel. So um, it is up on YouTube and you can find that at youtube.com slash grow with Google on their YouTube channel. Okay, we don't really have time for q and I, I, I hate that it even says it on there because this is going to mess y'all up. Uh, but thank you all for your time. Thank you. Yes, it was good seeing you again. Um, yeah, okay, great. You guys learned a lot. You learned a lot about a bunch of different stuff. About Okay, okay, good. Yay. I'm grateful that I was able to help everybody. Okay, Nanette. <laughs> Whew, you can take a breath for like a few seconds. Everyone, we want to be respectful of you your time with it being eight o'clock, but as we mentioned, you do have um, a copy. You will get a copy of the recording, and then you also have the, um, the list that she provided, and I'll make sure that I have that link available for you as well. And so that way you have it. Um, but again, thank you so much for your time. We greatly appreciate it. And most of all, Miss Lindsay, thank you, thank you, thank you, because my head is swimming myself. I've learned like 
a ton and I'm trying to figure it all out, which that's the beautiful thing about the recording because you can go back and hit it as many times as you want and pause it and that kind of thing. So that part is beautiful. So without further ado, all of you have an awesome evening. Take care and we will see you again virtually.